gentlemen are enjoying the lovely views of the former Rudolphus Bastion. The builder of the fortifications, Johann van Falkenburg, garden designer Isaac Altmann, and 1973 IGA Bon Vivant and mascot Ketten Blumer, join us to celebrate 200 years of Platinum Blumen. It was back in 1820 that work began on the new landscaping of the Wallring. Hamburg's government had charged Isaac Altmann from Bremen with redesigning the city ramparts dating from the time of the Thirty Years' War. It was to be a recreational park, a green ribbon for pedestrians, gentle curving lines instead of pentagonal bastions and moats. The Hamburg ramparts were laid out between 1616 and 1625 to plans by the Dutch master builder of defences, Johann van Falkenburg. It was an effective and expensive defensive wall against the ravages of the Thirty Years' War and against attacks by the Danes. The three are sitting on the former Rudolphus Bastion one of 22 bastions around the Wallring, all named after Hamburg aldermen. They can get an idea of the perspective the guards would have had at the time, an uninterrupted view of the Mediterranean terraces from 1963, its dark slate slabs making it one of the sunniest and warmest spots in Hamburg, together with the glass house. Here's the manager of the park, Eva Henze. Well, the glasshouse was built for the Botanical Institute at the time of the 1963 IGA. The 19th century glasshouses in the old ramparts area, in the old botanic gardens, were designed in the style seen at major botanical gardens like Kew Gardens. They were destroyed in the Second World War. The architect, Bernhard Hermkes, followed the contours of the ramparts with this roof landscape, the so-called contrascarp, a counterpart to the bastion which rose very steeply, giving an uninterrupted view of the enemy and so enabling them to be fought as excruciatingly as possible. What's special is that the skeleton of the glasshouse isn't internal. Instead, the building suspended from exterior steel girders. It gives a perfect illusion of the tropics, the desert, without any columns or pillars interrupting the view. In die Stadt einfallen wollten, damit die sich eben sozusagen präsentieren mussten und dann musste, konnte man sie leichter abschießen. So muss man es einfach sagen. Off they go for a ride on the old IGA tourist train. Look, it's the old IGA train from 63 and 73. The old plane tree that the botanist Johann Christian Lehmann planted with his own hands in 1821 still stands here in the old botanic gardens. Lehmann was a professor of natural science and senior librarian at the municipal library. The tree is a steadfast messenger from the old days, when orchids were still favourites with the public. The hotel Esplanade was an eye-catcher and the tropical water lily, Victoria Regia, flowered for the first time in 1851 and spread its huge plate-like leaves on the water in a glasshouse built specially for it. Today, the Wallring Park is made up of the following areas. The old botanic gardens, which moved in 1979 to Klein Flottbeek, Kleine Wallanlagen, Große Wallanlagen, Planten und Blumen since 1935. The whole Wallring has been known as Planten und Blumen since 1987, following a decision by the Hamburg Senate. It's only since 2013 that the whole park has had protected status. Back in the 19th century, the Wallring was already transformed into a kind of educational landscape for all, with museums, scientific institutes, and monuments on the old bastions. 
It was then that the Leishalle concert halls were built close to the Joachimus Bastion. Come on, Jan, we've got to go! How about a tea ceremony? That's been an option since 1990 in the Japanese garden, the largest of its kind in Europe. The so-called Bullerberger were built by the Cologne sculptor Wiedel Buller for the 1973 IGA. They remain a popular statement reacting to the shortage of playgrounds. Planten und Blumen has undergone many transformations, yet, despite a lot of conversion work, there are still some old traces to be discovered. Late 18th century cemeteries outside Damtor closed in 1879. From 1863 on, Alfred Brehm ran a zoo here. Favourites with the public were Anton the Elephant and Begum, the rhinoceros cow. But when everyone started going to Hagenbeck's in Stellingen in 1907, the zoo finally had to close 20 years later. No amount of bird displays, whale exhibitions or hospitality were enough to keep it going. At the time of the 1953 IGA, the glass Philips Tower stood here. Platinum Blomen was created during the Nazi era. In 1935, the Low German Garden Show was opened on the site of the zoo. In just a few months, the Reich Labour Service had to complete the demolition work and lay out new gardens from scratch. Local history, like the Lower Saxony Country Inn by the lake, and cosmopolitan Rio de Janeiro flair in the Orchid Café, complete with the impressive Victoria Regia in a heated pool. But during the Second World War, the exhibition Defence and Victory also took place here with military equipment. The water cascade dates originally from 1935 and yet garden designer Karl Plumin, in charge from 1935 to 1963, still hoped for a quiet interaction between people and plants, between creatures of equal, if different, kinds. The water fountains first worked their magic in the 1930s. They were extended in 1953, renovated and enlarged in 1973, and are the main attraction to this day. From the 1st of May to the 30th of September, 99 jets spray water to musical accompaniment and lit by more than 600 coloured spotlights. And every evening, two Sonny Lumiere artists give a performance. Ja, wir, wir machen den Spagat, dass wir ein Gartendenkmal hier It's a haben, balancing uh, act. We're dealing with a heritage garden with lots of time layers. The hidden fortifications from the 17th century. Then the 1820 layer with Altmann's design for the garden. Then the various garden shows and the various traces they've left, right up to 1973. It hasn't all been dismantled. Wherever you see wide 120 degree angles, that comes from the 1973 IGA sondern überall, wo man so weite, offene Winkel sieht, 120 Grad Winkel, das kommt aus der IGA 73. Every 10 years the park was redesigned for a new garden show, 
opened by the federal president of the time, 1953, 1963, 1973. Again and again there have been battles to protect the Valering Park, including by powerful citizens' initiatives. That's enough mudlarking! Now we're going to fly you to the Kleinewall Anlagen, to our habitat. Our home is not a castle. The old bunkers provide shelter for three bat species. Dorbenton's bat, for example. Der Quellgrund der Iger 63, der the wellhead from the 1963 IGA, at the transition from the old botanic gardens to the Wallanlagen. It's designed as a cascade. There are lots of little waterfalls on either side that mask the traffic noise. It's an ingenious plan. The walls are also in extremely well crafted. You rarely get to see that today. Die da gebaut wurden, sind so gut ausgeführt, das gibt es eben auch nur noch selten zu sehen. Even though the Wallering now seems lovely and tranquil, it was created and shaped by war and tyranny. And so the courts and what is today the Remand prison are located close to the former Ulricus Bastion. Hundreds were executed in this building during the Nazi period. Since 1973, there's been a roller skating and ice rink near the Eberhardus Bastion. And today, the skateboarders also practice here assiduously. Hamburg's first major international garden shows took place here in the Wallanlagen. We had schon auf dem alten Elbpark, der nicht zu plan for a few days in 1869 in the Alte Elbpark, which was part of the Wallring, there was a very successful international horticultural exhibition between Millentordam and the Johannesbollwerk at the harbour, with pavilions for plants and with drinks served at a dairy up on Stintfang, with a glorious view. And again, 30 years later, for several months, in 1897, in the Großewaldanlagen. The structures they had then we can only dream of. Many people in Hamburg had no opportunity to travel far. The world came to Hamburg, a Swiss chalet, a chateau on the Loire, they could visit them here in the park. By the way, the Museum for Hamburg History stands on the site of the Henricus Bastion. From 1825 onwards, the stars were studied and navigation practiced here, in an observatory that remained here till the end of the 19th century, when it had to move to the suburb of Bergedorf because there was too much light and atmospheric pollution. The Green Wallanlagen, a star among Hamburg's parks that's really not far away. Why not take a walk and discover it?